Hey there, I'm Rachel Ehring from Dream Lavender Music, and you're listening to the Dynamic Piano Teaching Podcast, the show that dives into piano pedagogy without being stuffy. If you're a piano teacher who wants to go beyond the method book to create an engaging, innovative studio, you've come to the right place. So let's get started. In today's episode, I have the pleasure of talking with Tara Boykin, creator of the Cascade Method. You will hear Tara's passion for all things piano, but she also shares some of her story of juggling being a mom of two young boys, as well as being a business owner and content creator. I know by the end of this episode, you will want to check out Tara's website and peruse the many, many resources that she has available for piano teachers. So here is my conversation with Tara. Hi, Tara. Welcome to the show. I'm so happy to meet you virtually today and talk to you. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your studio and your teaching business? Yes. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me. Um, My name is Tara. I am a piano teacher, a creator, a pianist, a mom of two boys. Um, I own a music school and I live in San Francisco, California, a little bit north of San Francisco. Um, but Cascade Method is basically what I have created over my 20 plus years of teaching. I started teaching when I was 14 and just, I hate being told what to do. So I, (laughs) uh, created my own thing and I just want to see kids happy and playing. And so I do everything in my power to make it fun and easy to understand. And, um, so yeah, that's how my method became what it is today. And I've created millions of resources and courses to show how I teach. And I think that sums it up a little bit. Great. So we are going to get into the cascade method. We're going to get into a bunch of your resources that you have for teachers. Um, I'm so excited to hear about all of those things. You have so many things to offer teachers. But before we do that, would you mind sharing a little bit about how you became a piano teacher and how you, I was reading on your blog a little bit and sounds like your love of piano and music started at a young age. Oh yes. Very young age. Um, I was about four and a half and my neighbor was a singer. And so she would give voice lessons. So I'd like always go to her house and just sit there quietly and watch her lessons. And between our students, like she'd go to the door. I see it. I would run to the piano and just imitate what she would do. And she was a vocal teacher. So she did like chords, you know, for warm ups and stuff for scales. And so that I would just try and imitate her. And I did this for six months. And then she finally was like, um, Audrey, like talking to my mom, I think you need to get Tara into piano lessons. And she looked at her like, what are you talking about? Tara's never touched a piano. She's like, no, 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 no. Like, trust me. Anyway. So my mom saved up for a piano and got me a piano and the rest is history. <laughs> So yeah, I just obsessed with it. Like it was always Tara, go do your homework first before you play piano. Cause otherwise I would just wouldn't stop. I would just mess around nonstop. I remember this tiny little toy blue piano, like literally one octave, those dinky things. And I was on that. I still have it. Like I need to bring that out. Oh, wow. Being a witch. oh my gosh. I just realized that. Cause my son, Evan, who's one is he will be my little mini pianist. He's obsessed with piano. Like any piano he sees, he's on it. Um, but so I just started playing really young and then like literally just loved it. And then at 14, I started teaching piano at 16. I started composing. So just like, it's always been there. And I remember also when I was 13, we come from no money. And so my mom was like, you know, doing extra side tutoring to afford giving me piano lessons slash uh, ballet lessons. And she, I remember asking, she's like, I can't afford both, uh, which one do you want to go and do ballet or piano? And I was like, I can't live without piano. So that wow. Yeah. And so then it's piano. That's wow, that's so cool. I have to ask you because I think a lot of us started teaching when we were like teenagers, just you know, the kid down the street, or yeah. for me, it was a kid at church. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember at that age. I was the lamest piano teacher ever. Like I would just, you know, go through the book and do what was in the book and then turn the page and do the next thing. Were you creative even at a young age? I love that that you asked this question. So I vividly remember these feelings of teaching at that age. I was terrified. I was, I was faking it till I make it in front of these like 
little kids, and these actually were kids that I knew from church, uh, it's kids I babysat, and then it turned into teaching um, both. I would do teach and, and face it. And I just remember like, oh my God, they're asking me to play it for them. And I'm just like, dear, the head, like, I'll, I'll play it for you next week. Okay. You, you do it first. And then, so then <laughs> I would like practice it during the week so I could play it for them. I was a terrible sight reader. I still am not like the best sight reader. Like that's some people's thing. It's not my thing. Um, I, you tell me to just randomly improvise or uh, no problem. I'm gold. If I know the song, like I'll fancy it up, but like playing note for note, I'm like, I hate being in a box. Oh, that's funny. I'm the opposite. I'm a great sight reader and please don't ask me to improvise. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. So I was not a creative teacher at first, not at 14. I was in survival mode. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going book. I, yeah. Page by page song by song. Like, yeah. So, and then I went to college and I, I got students down there. I put posted things in schools and did the whole babysitting. And that's what put me through college was babysitting and teaching piano also. And I think that's when I started getting creative. I realized in college one day I was like, I heard a a song on the radio. It was pop song. And I came, I was like, I started figuring it out on the piano. I didn't know I could do that. Figure things out by ear. I, and I always played by ear, but I didn't realize to the extent. And I just developed it and I literally can play anything I hear. Like if I've heard it a hundred times on the radio, I find the key and I can literally play the song for you. Even if I've never like tried it on the piano. Wow. My that's brain a gift. No, it's like I, my fingers, uh-huh. I'll be in my car and my fingers will just move and do the intervals. I can just, I, I see it and I feel it. It's weird. But anyway, it's something that can be de- developed and that I know everyone can do it just might be easier or harder for some. I did. I slowly, as, and then I got back from college. And that's when it really started. That's when I started developing my method without trying. I was just like, oh, I want to teach these kids scales. Cause after going through college, like I had all my college classes and I did all the scales and stuff. And I hadn't done really any of that prior learn chords. Like, oh my gosh, don't get me started on chords. Um, started teaching all my student chords. And then I would do like these little sheets, uh, in each of my kids notebooks where I write their homework. I'd like do these grids and like, okay, let's learn a C chord and a C minor. And then I do the checks and I would like, here's your right hand call and here's your left hand. And then like, can you do both hands? And then we check it off. And I kept doing this in all of my students, um, notebooks. And mind you, I got back from college and within a year I had 40 plus students and then a wait list. And then I started like, I'm like, I can't take on more kids. I'm seven days a week. I can't maintain this. Um, anyway, so that's how my my theory book was created was doing, I was like, I can't keep doing this in the notebook. Why not just create it in Microsoft words? Yes. I did a book in Microsoft words. My brother said I was crazy, which I later on created in Photoshop, but, um, that's where it started was the theory. And then also the pop songs, like I said, I picked them up and I was like, these kids, like if I can do it, these kids can. So I would start teaching the kids, the pop songs. And then the games came way later. They came like a couple of years ago. Um, okay. where, yeah, but like the theory and the pop songs like that has been since 2010. I love hearing you talk about it and about, cause we're so different. Like I was so, um, I guess in the box and yeah. I was reading the music and didn't play by ear. So it's really fun to hear how your journey was different. Mm -hmm. Here's a fun fact for our listeners. You actually went to college right down the street from where I work and where I'm recording this in Orange, California. Mm -hmm. I could walk to your college right down the street here, but we're uh, now you're in Northern California and I'm in Southern California. I loved Chapman so much, so much. Yeah. Orange, California. I mean, we won't geek out on Orange, California, but it's a really, it's a really fun place to work and lots of fun restaurants and things going on here. So let's talk a little about the cascade method. And I wasn't familiar with the method um, until recently. So I would love if you would describe it for us and tell us kind of what makes it unique and what teachers might want to know about it. It's so funny because like I'm horrible about describing what I do, <laughs> uh, but I just think uh, I incorporate traditional methods and non-traditional methods. I think it's so important to make teaching fun. Um, I just am obsessed with piano and that's all I want for kids to be. I want them to love it and I'm terrified of them hating it. So I do everything I can for them to like not be afraid of it or like, look, it's really easy. I promise you. And so like, for example, reading, reading music for me growing up was the hardest thing ever. Like I loaded up every 
piece of music with, I wrote out every single note. You, you name it, it was in A, F, F sharp, G, da, da, da. like literally you can't even see the notes anymore because it was just me writing all the notes in. <laughs> um, so that, I think that's a big thing um, was my invention of creation of note match. Um, it's a sight reading tool and you put it behind the black keys and it's literally a grand staff that sits vertically or horizontally on the keys um, and helps kids know where the notes are because that was the hardest thing was reading. And so I think that was, that is the first thing that um, that's why I think teachers lose students because they try so hard to teach them to read and it's hard. It's hard to teach it. And um, this literally, I can teach anyone to read in five minutes, people that have never played piano before. And it just, it makes it easy one. Um, so I, I definitely use that. And then um, the pop songs, uh, I love teaching by ear. I realize that, and I think a lot of kids do this too. I'm sure teachers can relate. How many of your students are like, can you play this for me? You know, and so they yes. listen to it because they don't know the rhythm and they don't know that they want to know what it sounds like, but that's normal. Like you're supposed to know what something sounds like. Like I always felt like it was cheating to listen to a song and then play, but I grew up listening to classical music. I knew what it sounded like. So then when I learned classical pieces, I was like, oh my gosh, I know how it's supposed to sound, but I'm still figuring out the notes, you know? But I was um, definitely guilty of like asking my teacher, can you play it for me first? And I would just look at what she did and then I knew how to play it, you know? Yeah. And I think sometimes I feel like maybe I'm a lazy teacher if I just play it for my student instead of using words to explain all of the different things on the page. But I don't think I should feel that way. And it's not, you know, it's not like that's our first thing that we do is, okay, here's how it goes, or let me play it for you. We still explain everything, yeah. but I think you're right that it's okay to to play for our students. And it's actually really good for them to hear us play the piano. I'll, I'll usually tell them, you try it first and then I'll play it for you. So they have a little bit of effort. They like, cause it's, it is hard to figure it out. And then I want to see what they can do. And then I'm like, there's the treat. I'll play it for you. And then we'll really break it down and figure it out. But yeah, no, it's not. Uh, and I always tell my kids, like, it's not cheating. Like, listen to the song during the week. Like, it will only help you, you know? And then, so there's a lot. I want my kids to be, what's the word? Not multifaceted, but just like good in all the realms. Like, be good at, at reading music. Be good with your ear. Because if you're good with your ear, it'll make you a better reader and all that stuff. I want you to be good at theory. I want you to, um, there's another one. Oh, be good at like, composing or improvising it's not for everybody but I want to give them all the tools to to explore that you know some might be like oh my gosh I didn't know this world and that's all they want to do then you know um I understand for some teachers that might not be their comfort zone so they won't do that but um there's always ways and there's if you understand chords and scales it, it can be simple but you can make beautiful music out of simple things you know Yes. So, anyway. so tell us, how does the cascade method start? Does it start with note names or notes on the staff? Great question. It depends because I get kids of all ages. I don't like starting super duper young. Like I don't do three fours. Um, I like five or six minimum because I like starting really early on staff. Uh, because of note match, I'm able to teach really quickly how to read. Um, I created a book that goes with note match. I've written 17 books so far. Um, so Note match is one of them that if I get a young kid, I'll, I'll do note match in the book, but I also start really early on just with a, my beginner piano book, which is literally pieces right now with A, B, C, like letters. And, oh, this riles have so much. I'm just going to say it though. Teachers are like, oh, it's only a pre beginner book. Then no, no, no. I'm like, no, my gosh, it is. It's so much more because I, yes, it's good for little kids. They can learn songs so quickly. They reinforce the white keys, but I also teach them chords really soon. So Yes, Mary Had a Little Lamb, super easy, happy birthday, um, twinkle, twinkle, little star, all simple. And But if you're teaching kids chords, they're developing dual hand dexterity and stuff that they can't do by reading right away. So they're playing playing music, which is what they want. They're getting like reward right away. And I don't know, I just, there's so many benefits to what I call my pop method books, which is like written out with letters, no, no, no actual notes, but I do definitely also complement that with note match and reading. Like that's so important to me too. Okay. I see. So it's, it's 
all of it at once. So, sorry. So it's like, it's getting them to play. And then it's also note reading. And then I literally start little kids on pop songs too. Like it doesn't have to be both hands. It could be just a melody, but they're playing things that are current and make them sound cool. And that's all they want. Yes, I know. It's so important for kids to be playing songs right away. Um, I know they want that. I think the parents want to hear songs and it just makes them more excited about playing the and piano. If they see I their think. kids playing, they're happy because they're paying. So they're like, I want my kids to be playing and practicing. So let's talk a little more about your note match tool. I saw this on your website and I was fascinated by it. I think it's actually one of the first, my first introductions to you was the note match tool. You, I'm sure you could describe it much better than I can. <laughs> so it's a, it's, it's a, it's basically the grand stuff that I literally cut out, stretched out, lined up so that the lines line up with the G, B, D, F, A, and same thing in the treble clef. And then the space notes line up with the space notes on the keys. Um, it sits right behind the black keys and sits up against the fallboard. I love it because it's not stickers. You can take it on and off. It also happens to be magnetic which is not something I imagined originally when I had it created and everything. But when um, the guy that I hired to help me uh, produce it or go into production, he's like, here's a cardboard one. And here's like this uh, rubbery magnetic one. I'm like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. And yes, this. (laughs) So it's magnetic. It is also a whiteboard. And I made it specifically so that the letters written on NoteMatch are empty so that like, they're like bubble letters so that kids can color them in. I'm all about colors. I'm obsessed with colors. You, if you see my method, it's nothing but colors. <laughs> like I even print a lot of my books in full color just because it makes kids happier. I don't care if I get like $5 less of royalties on Amazon because of it. I don't care. Like I do this because I want kids to love piano and I see them open books and their eyes are just like, <gasps> you know, so happy. Anyway, so note match it. Yeah. They can color in. It's magnetic whiteboard all the good all all the things so what do you do with why is it magnetic what do you do it wasn't on purpose but it's great like I've created these little magnets and so I'll work on chords or for example if we're working on um scales you can use a little magnets and put it in and they can just visuals visually see where they are let's say that they're learning a piece and it's concentrating on just see through g and then you can either color in the little bubble letters or they can put magnets it just magnus adds a tactile touch to it and kids love like doing things with their hands and, and so um and there's just fun like, to use it at, even off the piano you know and then i've seen teachers like do like practice doing skips with magnets or a step you know and see it on note match i mean there's so many different ways i'm sure there's things that i haven't even done that could be done you know sure do your students uh tend to buy one to have at home or is it just in the lesson um, great question. I, so through my school and through my students, it is mandatory. You start with me, you get a beginner package, you get four books, you get my theory book, beginner book, a practice book, which is like, they just color if they practice and it's a reward system and the note match book. And then, um, and they get note match. So it's a big like thing up front, but I'm like, literally trust me, your kids will never stop piano. If you give, you set them up this way, just trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and it works with a, would it work with a digital keyboard as well? Yes. So when I designed it, I, I lived near a piano store. So I had like hundreds of pianos to try it on. And so I went with like balsa wood and different uh, sizes. And then I found the one that fit on like almost all of, of course, of all the pianos. Mine is the one that has the biggest gap. So thank God I did not base it off my piano or it wouldn't fit on any pianos. <laughs> <laughs> so it fits on most pianos unless you've got a super old one where the like the fall board is wavy you know and like comes forward but if it's flat mm-hmm. you're golden and it sticks perfectly and it works also on keyboards nice keyboards if you have like this really dinky like super cheap ones by millimeters a fraction of a millimeters it starts getting off because the white keys the um, width or the size is not exactly like the real pianos so okay off by yeah it's a little bit off so yeah, that on, on nice even keyboards and digital ones like it still works if you have a nice one because it's the same size as you know keyboards how do your students transition from the note match tool to the staff because when I look at the note match it's it's essentially a sideways staff do they get confused when it flips vertically to the staff so on the I page? explain it to them and I have this thing I call it the three question method where it's like literally you ask these three questions and you can find any note on the staff 
So imagine, we all know, okay, we'll imagine the A in the treble clef, right? Second space. So I'm like, is this note in the treble or the bass? I'm like, I touch the lines. Is it in the treble and I touch the treble or is it in the bass? And I'm like, oh, obviously it's the treble. I'm like, okay, well, so we've narrowed it down to the treble side on the piano. Like I show them the treble clef side on the note match. And I'm like, is it a line or a space note? And they're like, and if they've never heard this before, I'm like, is it between lines or does it have a line through it? <laughs> they're like, oh, it's it's between the lines. It's a space note. I'm like, great. So we've narrowed it down to F, A, C, E. And I put it out. And then I'm like, is it space one, two, three, or four? And then like, oh, two, it's right here. And then they play the A on piano. So they literally know. It's just, they just need to understand how it's, um, I'm doing motions with my hands. I don't know. <laughs> Listeners don't see me doing all my like hand motions. Right. <laughs> um, but how it goes from uh, vertical to horizontal. And I did create what I call a mini note match or pocket note match, which is vertical. Because I had a student, I was like, well, I want to see it also on my piano next to my sheet music. So I made them a little mini one that sits directly oh. if they want to see. And so I, I, I twisted all the letters to be like, uh, vertical. vertical. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. So oh, that's a great idea. Also, I'm obsessed with note rush. Um, shout out to Thomas who created it. <laughs> and a lot of times what I'll do is I, when I show them and practice the notes, I'll turn the staff sideways so that it's, it, exactly like note match and then they understand mm -hmm. and they kept the lines and then I'm like okay now let's try it again and do it vertically how sheet music is and then they start understanding and there's no problem and some kids understand it right away but some kids need it sideways like no match gotcha yeah I had never thought about the fact that when we're playing it essentially is a horizontal version of the vertical stuff that and we're reading 90 degrees Boof. Mm -hmm. that's so interesting to think about um, let's talk a little bit about your free content because you have a ton of it. I was looking through your blog, which I loved. And tell us about some of your free resources that you have available for teachers. So I have a whole freebie section in my website. You have to go to the freebies thing and then sign up and you'll get a link in an email. But like I, I put a ton of free things that I created. It used to be just in my shop is free, but now I like kind of hide it so it doesn't get mixed up. But so lots of stuff in there. Um, within that stuff, there's lots of free pages from each of my books so you, that people can get a taste of what it is. Um, and then just some game, some, a lot of games, a lot of things in there. And then, yeah, I give away some free things on my blogs. Um, can't keep up with what's there. I also do freebie Fridays. So every other week, uh, people get free things, which are paid products, but I drop them down to zero for a week. So. I don't know if people know like Enneagram types, but I am number two, which is the giver. And I just, I've come from nothing. And I always have a fear of like people not being able to afford things. And that's like my own issues, but uh, I just love giving, 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 because I just want to help. Your loss are gain, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I hope like I, they see that, oh, these are great resources. And now what else do I have to offer? And I'm not in. My, my, right. my dream is for teachers to go through my course and get certified because I know that if you go through my stuff, like you will have kids lining up at your door. You can raise your rates. You can make a living doing this. Like, oh my gosh, I keep like, don't get me started on that because <laughs> I would talk for hours on that. I am going to get you started on it. <laughs> let's, let's talk a little about your courses. Do you have sort of a flagship course when you say my course? And then I know you have some mini courses as well. Can you tell us what you have? I have a huge main course. It is the Cascade Method training course. Um, and it is everything. It's insane. It's a, it's a lot. But all my mini courses are pulled from my main one. So I'll I'll explain what the mini ones are, which they are all part of the main one. Uh, the mini one, there's a pop mini course, which is because one of my modules in the main one is my pop course, teaching teachers how to pick up songs by ear so you can do it with your students. Um, two modules are my theory book. I break down my entire theory book. I don't explain how to do my theory book when you buy it. And the reason for that is because I want kids to open the book and be excited about it. I don't want them to see all these words, like the words need to come from you as a teacher. Like, oh, this is how you do a sequel. This is how you do a C scale. This is how you do inversions. No, 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 no. Um, so my, that's where my training program is born was because like teachers who don't know me or I don't train for my school or interview and don't know how to use my theory book. So that's why I created my course. Um, a whole other module is note match. I did not do that as a mini course, but I explain how I teach it, what I use, all the things. So my, I did pull the theory course. It's a, mo I call it my modern piano theory. Um, so that's a mini course. And then 
just, there's a whole module about like what makes you a cascade method teacher. I think I'm, I love moms. I've always wanted to be a mom. And I think a lot of that is in my teaching, like the nurturing and the caring. And I want to be there. Like, for example, today I'm about to have my last lesson with Jeremy. I've been with him since he's five. He's 18. I've had him 13 years. He's wow. off to college. Like he's one of the longest students I've had because like, he's the one I started in 2010 and he was five. Like that's the youngest I usually take. Um, so I, I talk a lot about my kids in my students in my program. And, um, but yeah, a lot of it is like, when I start with students, like I warn the parents, like you are about to be with me for a very long time, unless your kids quit or move away and you don't want to keep going. But like, generally they stick around <laughs> just coming back to the last module in the main program. Uh, just things that I do with students to get, there's the nurturing, the caring. Um, there's also other things like the structuring of lessons and, what I do, I call it a playlist. I always film my kids. I used to do CDs, but CDs are becoming kind of obsolete. You know, I love the physical tactile version because like I'm an artist, I've released four albums and I loved like holding my album in my hands, even though now yes. they're not really doing that anymore. So my fifth album, like will never be tangible. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'll get over it. But so now I film them and I create playlists on YouTube. So they have their playlist. So you have videos of them when they're like five and now 18. Like you literally see them growing up. It's crazy. And the parents oh, love that's it. Amazing. Yeah. So just all these little things that I do. And then the reason behind it. Oh, yes. Because I studied music therapy. So there's a lot of um, psychology that goes behind how I teach and what I do and why I do it. Um, so I talk a lot about that in the sixth module. That's basically my course. I have another one. It's dedicated and geared more towards students. It's called Hooked on Piano. It goes with the book I also wrote. And that's a big thing that I'm trying to grow. Eventually, I'd love to do those because I, I, I've done courses for the teachers and I'm just really bad at promoting it. But I, my thing is I just love teaching and I'm really good at it and the kids love it. And it's my thing. And I have like a wait list out the wazoo because like every kid wants to work with me and I'm just like, I have no more space. So the hooked on piano course that I'm building out. I do a live one, but I'm trying to do a forever green one. Um, so I'm working on that, but eventually I'd love to have teachers be able to see what I did so that they can do it as well. But you have such great energy. I can see why students are drawn to that. And I'm sure you have so many students who are wanting to study with you just because of your energy, but also because of these methods that you've developed over years and years that are working with students. You mentioned um, that you're a mom and that you love being a mom. And I was reading in one of your blog posts recently about balancing mom life and work life, which resonates with me because I just feel like there's never enough time and there's always more to do. Can you talk a little bit about how you balance? I mean, when I'm listening to you talking about all these resources, I'm like, when do you ever sleep? How do you have time to do all of this and take care of your family? Can you just, I know a lot of our listeners probably struggle with this. Can you talk to us a little about how you balance everything? Of course. So yeah, it's been a long road. Um, for those who don't know my history, uh, my husband passed away in 2021. So I, at the time I had a one-year-old Jordan, who's now he'll be three in September. And I was pregnant with Evan. I was six weeks pregnant. Um, wow. so, I'm so sorry. Thank you. So that, it's been the past couple of years have been hard to create things because I've been, you know, dealing with that pregnant and then single mom of two babies. Um, before that I was doing a lot of it all on my own. It was easier because I had Matt here and, um, help with Jordan. Um, but since, um, it's been a lot of delegating, uh, training my virtual assistant, how to do all the things that I, I used to do, like upload all the games. I still love creating and I'll always do that and I miss it. And so I do that once all the other important things are done, like my emails and all that stuff. Um, let me, let me backtrack for a second. I had created my piano, my theory book, right. 2010. And then I re-released it officially on Amazon in like 2015. Then I got, I got married and I got pregnant with Jordan and I was pregnant in January and then COVID hit in 2020 in, in March. And so I was three months pregnant. I was like, Oh, one, I like, that's all I've been waiting for <laughs> is to be pregnant. And, um, 
I just remember like, oh my God, this is it. Like once he comes, I can't create anything. Like my life is over joking. No, I'm still going to do things. It's just going to take a lot longer. It's going to be hard to do things. But I pumped out 14 books while I was pregnant with Jordan. It was so like in less in nine months, I pumped out 14 books. Insane. I, I don't know how it just <laughs> happened. I went from traveling to all my students to not. So I literally gained six hours back of my life of not driving anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at least that, and then I was just a workaholic. I always have been still am. Um, so I, so pumped those books out ever since it's been a lot slower. <laughs> uh, I have released, I think two books since um yeah hooked on piano and then a, a French one I just released like the beginner piano book version I did it in French actually I'm kidding and I just redid the chords book and released that the French version like last month yeah I'm in the process of translating all my books into French and then I have another teacher that just offered to do it in Portuguese and another teacher that wants to do it in Italian so um oh I love goodness. languages That's so amazing. I, I love yeah and I, I've been trying to translate a lot of my games into French and German because I had a teacher that offered to help for the German part. Uh, so eventually I would love to have everything in all these different languages because I want my method to be everywhere <laughs> done by everyone. But obviously we don't all teach in English. Um, yeah. But yeah, so balancing the work life and everything. Do my work when I can. I, I feel guilty when I'm on my computer. My kids are there. Um, I do it when they nap. The times I have a babysitter is literally when I teach. So the, I can't do my method. Um, but it's a lot. I'm tired to say the least. Uh, but it's also been a lot of delegating, hiring a virtual assistant to do things. I've hired uh, a girl on Instagram, Kaylee, shout out to you for listening. Uh, so cute. She helps me with my boom cards. I tell her what we want to do, or she'll come up with ideas and help me create it. And then she, so she does the boom cards for me. I'm upping my Pinterest game. Um, so I used to do all the pins myself and now I trained and I'm, I hired someone to do that. So she creates the pins for me and uploads them. So it's a lot of, it's a team, you know, it's, a, mm-hmm. I can't, I used to want to do it all. And I realized I can't. And if I want to grow and scale, like there's no, way I could do it all. It's good for listeners to realize, you know, when they see your website and all these things that you have out there, first of all, a lot of them were from a long time ago or a while ago. And second, it takes a team. You're not doing it all on your own and None of us need to feel like we have to do everything all on our own. Just know though, if anyone messages me on Instagram or Facebook or email, like they are talking to me because sometimes they'll be like, excuse me, or talk in a sense that they're going to get someone that's not me. I'm like, no, 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 it's me. So if it took me two days to answer, I'm so sorry. It's because kids, (laughs) I will get back to you, but it is me reaching out and answering. So well, thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, and I'm so sorry for your loss. And I admire what what you're doing as a mom and as a business owner and a teacher as well mm-hmm. through this time. Um, you mentioned boom cards. And as you know, we had Kelly Bordeaux on the show a few weeks ago talking about boom cards. And I will admit to you, I have not jumped on the boom card train yet. You will but... be addicted. I'm telling you, as soon as you start, you're like, why did I not start sooner? So you create boom cards. Is that correct? Yes. yes. And why should I jump on the boom card train? Tell me. Uh, because your students will be obsessed and they can practice theory concepts during the week and love it. And if that's what gets them started on practicing is five minutes of boom cards, then, you know, that's a win. And then like, oh, let me go practice piano now. But yeah, it's also great for, you know, parents are like, oh, we're going to be away. They can't practice piano. Like, oh, guess what you can do? You know, if they have screen time, at least give them some like piano stuff to work on, you know? Because like I do it from rhythm to note reading to ear training uh, chords, scales, like you name it, like every theory concept, like what I want to be able to do is everything in my theory book, like every concept I teach, there's a boom card for that or several because kids get bored of the same thing. So yeah, I'll do piano keys, like reinforcing all the white names. Um, and I do themes like it'll be either a monthly theme or a season or whatever. Um, but 
anyways, it's something you can give to kids and they, it self checks them and they'll know if they're right or wrong and you can track their progress and all that stuff. You know, I don't really care about that. I just want them to have fun with it. So nice. So it's just another way f- to reinforce all the concepts that we're teaching them. Exactly. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about some of your supplemental books that you have available. I saw you have Halloween and Christmas and all sorts of supplemental um, music. And tell us if kids haven't been doing the Cascade Method, can they still use your supplemental materials? Absolutely. So I have a couple with like actual traditional sheet music, not many. Um, I do. I've written my own music and I'll share those, but Uh, A lot of them are my pop method. So you have the beginner piano book that is written with ABC. That's for like the young ones. If you get an older beginner, I start them with what I call piano favorites. It has like Fearless, Pink Panther, Titanic, like all these um, songs that kids want to learn right away. You know, Adam's Family. Um, My newest one, Hooked on Piano. Actually, that's not my newest. It's the before newest one (laughs) because I did another French one. Uh, but that one mixes a little bit of everything, which I love. It's based on that course I was talking about earlier. Um, I pulled 10 pieces from the beginner book. I included actual games in it. Um, there are pages from my note mesh book because I also want to, um, there's certain things I want to teach, develop like finger dexterity and stuff. Um, and then I, I want kids to also do boom cards along with the book. So it's like literally like an all-inclusive book. Um, I based it off of like 12 weeks. Uh, but if you do it, you can do it as a group or you can do it as a single child and then move at your own pace. Um, obviously, I have my theory book, uh, which my whole course is like based on. Um, oh, my chords book. How did I forget that? Literally, teachers are obsessed with the chords book. Um, it it teaches chords and it's based off of one page in my in my theory book, chords one, which is what I called the book chords one. Uh, but I go through all the what I call white chords. So the ones that start on white notes. So C, C minor. D major, D minor, E major, E minor. And it's like a four page work book where like they'll learn the chord, they have note match, they color in the notes, they see where they are on the staff versus the actual keyboard. I have a little section for composition, which is so amazing because like love what when kids write music, they it makes so much more sense to them. And it's just everything starts clicking or you see what they get or don't get. It's magical. I could talk a lot about that, <laughs> but, and then, um, the fourth page is like a little piece and it's very chord based. And I have them like analyze it. Like, look, almost all these notes are part of the C chord. Let's find the imposters. There's like two that are not part of the C chord. Everything else is. So you're our state. Like, don't even freak out. You're all good. Anyways. Um, that's my course book. Oh yeah. I have three practice books. So like hundred days of practice, um, two of them, it's like, these little bubbles and you color them and then it creates this pretty picture. And at the end of the hundred days, I give them like a reward, a little prize or whatever. Um, For the younger ones, I created my monthly practice challenge book where it's um, like 30 or 31 days, depending on the month. And it's themed with the month. So Halloween, I'll put like a pumpkin or July for us in the U S July is the American flag. January is a snowman. Anyway. So I have them color and see if they can get color, like do like the whole month. If not, you know, it's like, how many days can you do? And if you, you, we, they did 10 days in January, let's like February, let's see if you can do like 15 or 20, like beat your record. Christmas books. Okay. So I have two Christmas books. The first book, um, it, I did it in two versions. I did it, it, they're all in my pop method. Um, the first book is easier songs. Second book has like more complex songs. Um, but the first book I did, where it's on the white keys, but then a lot of teachers like teaching on black keys. I'm not, I don't do that right away. I, I go directly to the white keys, but I did all of, I wrote it also out on the black keys for kids who like are just starting, but they want to learn Christmas songs because they just want to play. So um, I'll keep going. I have two student duet books. They're the same. One is written out with my pop method so that you can teach. It's basically teaching kids by rote. Uh, the music is also on Spotify, so you can hear the student version, the teacher version, and the entire duet. Um, and then the other one is uh, traditionally like real sheet music, but it's harder to teach a five-year-old who's just starting that they can't read three flats or three sharps. So that's why I have my um, pop version. Uh, and then we're almost done, guys. <laughs> Piano, <laughs> I talked about that. My Halloween one is one of my other most popular ones. That's original music. 
was literally, so it, I released it 2020 October. So we were in COVID. I was literally nine months pregnant with Jordan about to pop. I remember filming them. You can see the YouTube videos of me, like recording the pieces and showing you what it sounds like huge. And he came like a week later. I was like, I need to get this book out before he gets here. That was like the last one I released <laughs> the 14th book. Um, the it's wow. oh, there's I, I'm obsessed with the music in that book. So many teachers love all the pieces and the duet parts are epic. They make the kids sound so good. Like I put so much heart in that piece in that book. Like it's so good. Um, and then I have a children's song book, which is based off of like the latter day saints music. Um, one of the teachers in my program asked me if I could help her do that. It was like a dream of hers. So I was like, I'll do it, just choose 20 songs you want. And so it uses my pop method, but um, those are the songs in that one. And then I need to add my French book that's not on this page. Uh, but yeah, so the French one is like I talked earlier, same version as the beginner book, but it's all French songs. So um, just a little side note, part of the whole thing of me wanting to translate my books into French and all these other languages, I was like, oh, the beginner book will be so easy. And so I started doing like all the ABC into Do, Re, Mi. But I'm like, wait, kids don't know Row, Row, Your Boat. Like that's not a, f- a French song. And I'm like, all the ones I did in, in this English book are songs we grew up, you know, in America. Um, sure. And I was like, but I also grew up with French songs. My mom is French and I speak French fluently, all that stuff. Uh, and I was like, I can't just translate all these songs. It won't make sense to the kids in France. And this, I realized this too, because like another teacher in my program is in Greece and she's been using my note match book and translating that into Greek. And she's like, I don't really use your beginner piano loop book because the kids don't know the song. So I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. So in translating all my books, the beginner piano book will not be the same pieces in French as it would be in English. It's just going to be a whole new book. Um, Wow. That's, yeah. that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, the chord book, I translated that to French. I had a teacher in France help me, even though like I speak French and I could have done it, but she did a lot of the legwork and then I tweaked it to how I wanted it to be. I won't be able to do that in languages. I don't speak. I'm just going to have to trust right. my teacher and be like, I hope you know that's right. Not write random things in there. So yeah, the French book has all of, the, I'm obsessed with it because it's all like so many of the songs are minor and I'm obsessed with minor keys. So um, they're just really pretty songs. Anyway, so that sums up all of my books. And yes, teachers can use them. Um, I think that if they don't understand my method, the pop method, it, they'd be like, oh, it's only for little kids. But like, you can turn them into really complex songs. Like I can, I've done workshops on like how you can take, uh, for example, the Adams Family into a simple version to like a super complex version, adding chords. And it just develop. it gives kids the ability to be creative and do their own versions and not always be like, Oh my God, I have to follow exactly what the sheet music says. No, no, no. Like, no. So I also do pop songs because like, I want them to be creative and do things with their left hand that they wouldn't normally do. Like it's harder to read the rhythm in the right hand, like all, all the things. Thank you so much for sharing about all of your books. And I think that teachers will have fun uh, going to your website and perusing Mm -hmm. all of your different resources. Um, You have recently acquired another business as well. Can you tell us about Piano Language? Yes. So Alexa came to me and basically her heart wasn't in it anymore. And I've always loved everything she's done. Uh, And she's like, do you want Piano Language? Obviously, like there's business transaction, all the things, but like I have it now and I, it's, what she created is incredible, like incredible. There's at least 30 books. A lot of them are sheet music, which um, all the traditional teachers out there that love sheet music, you guys will be obsessed with everything that's in there. There's original music and there's a, a lot of arrangements. She's written a lot of things for younger kids um, alongside with duet parts, which are so good for kids. It, it helps them for rhythm and they feel good and everything. Um, and yeah, so the couple method books, and then there's a lot of just standalone single sheet music pieces. So incredible resources and, um, music for kids that they'll love. And there's, uh, there's two composers that are part of piano language, Amanda and Hannah, and they have written beautiful music too. I love their books. Um, so yeah, just tons of beautiful music. Okay. So can listeners find those on your website as well? Yes, I did put it on my website. If they go to like where all like my games are and books, like there's a piano language book section. 
Um, but you can also okay. go to panellanguage.com and all the things are there too. And I also just recently put all 30 books that were on piano language on Amazon. So they, because that was a thing, um, shipping internationally, uh, piano language is on Shopify and Shopify is not connected to Amazon. So the shipping internationally is really expensive and I wanted to not have that. So I got all of the books on Amazon. So anyone internationally, um, in Europe or UK or wherever can get the books like normal cost, if that makes sense. Oh, perfect. Mm-hmm. Great. Thank you for sharing about that. Um, you have so many resources already. Is there anything coming up that you're working on that you'd want to share with teachers that they should be on the lookout for? Um, I mean, I'm always creating more boom cards. I have a list of ones that I want to make and that I'm asking Kelly, Kaylee to help me make and stuff. Um, but right now, to be honest, this whole year, like getting through Evan being one and not sleeping all the time, a lot of it has been organizing everything I have and getting everything aligned with everyone who's helping me and knowing where everything is. And, um, it's been something I wanted to do since COVID like organize and, and then everything happened with Matt. And so it's just, I'm in my little bubble of just like getting everything lined up again and know where everything is because I want to come out like next year, just guns blazing and really share my program again. Cause like, I'm really not good about promoting <laughs> and sharing it and I need to be. Uh, so right now I'm like kind of in my bubble trying to get everything organized and then but there's always new games coming out. Like just go on my front page of my website. There's a section, new products. There's always new things coming up because I cannot stop creating, uh, but <laughs> nothing huge and massive right this second. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's fine. You have so much already to offer um, teachers and you have a special offer for our listeners. Can you talk about your pop mini course? Yes. So to anyone who's listening, there is a coupon in your show notes, I believe. Yes. And you get 50 off the course. It's lifetime access. Um, I walk you through how to break down songs, pop songs, pick anything up by ear. And on top of that, I've also included any live workshop that I've done for teachers in my main course, because I offer that monthly. Um, anything related to uh, my pop method, whether it's pop songs or recently I've done a lot of it on my pop books, like how to add chords or how to, you know, accompany a student with the pieces, even though there's not a single note of sheet music, but you can do that. So, um, again, lifetime access to it, um, with the 50 off $50 off, it's like two seventy five, which is so worth it because I literally had a teacher that did the course and in one month had 10 students, like a wait list and 10 new students. Like who does that? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so. amazing. It works because wow. <laughs> kids yeah. just want to be cool and learn things that's on the radio. They want to learn yeah. Taylor Swift that just came out all her new songs. Like, yeah. <laughs> Great. So we'll put the coupon code in the show notes and um, listeners can check that out and check out the pop mini course. Um, thank you so much, Tara. I have a few final questions for you that I like to ask all of my guests. The first one is what is your favorite music to listen to when you're off the clock just for fun? I just love pop music, like the Ed Sheeran, uh, Taylor Swift, all that stuff. Um, I do like a little bit of electronic dance music too. Um, that's Matt's fault. <laughs> watch it all the time and write it. So, and then classical music, I do love classical music. Um, but mainly, I listen to pop. Nice. And is there a music teacher in your past that had a particular impact on either your teaching or your playing? Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, Edith, who I had from five till 14. And then she's like, I can't teach you anymore. You need to go to the conservatory. And I just bawled my eyes out. But like, she was the most, she is, she is why I am who I am today. And the way I teach, she was nurturing and caring and kind and loving and all the things. And just like, I was never afraid if I didn't practice, which between you and me, I always did. (laughs) But like, I was never afraid to go see her because my first teacher, when I was four and a half like I, all I remember is just this dark black memory and I would cry on my way to lesson and my mom immediately stopped she was like this is not happening and then she found Edith and then like oh my god yes the rest is history yep. 
tell listeners how they can find you, where they can find all of these amazing resources and how they can connect with you. Um, everything can be found on my website, <laughs> cascademethod.com. Um, all my books are there or on Amazon. But to talk to me either through my website or you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. I'm all over. I just started a TikTok, having fun with that. Um, but yeah, all the social medias, YouTube, I'm there. So. And it's Cascade Method on all of those different yes. channels. Uh, ca- yeah, Cascade Method on all of them, except TikTok. I did Tara Boykin. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tara. This was so fun to get to know you a little and hear about the many, many things that you have to offer teachers. I really appreciate you taking time to talk to us today. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a great day, Tara. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation with Tara, creator of Cascade Method. Like Tara mentioned, she's a giver. So I hope that you will check out her website, sign up for her email list, and follow her on Instagram to learn more about the many things she has to offer. Until next time, happy piano teaching. Have you been thinking about automating your payments and scheduling so that you have more time to spend on the creative side of teaching? If you feel overwhelmed by the options and aren't sure where to start, check out Fonz.com. I use Fonz every day for scheduling and setting up billing. Not only does it simplify things for me and saves me a ton of time, but it makes it easy for my studio families to set up automatic payments and it sends them appointment reminders, which has cut down significantly on missed lessons. So if you are still sending out individual invoices and waiting for checks to arrive, Click on the link in the show notes for Fonz to start your free trial today.